Well, hello there, people. Welcome to Zip Away, where today I'm doing a live stream, and I'll later edit this and do it as a video. But we're gonna, we're gonna talk about five fantastic tips to improve your videography or your pictures that take you beyond composition to really help make your videos go to that next level, okay? Now, um, I'm gonna kind of pause a little bit. I know people are kind of joining in a little bit on the late side. We hope they join us and they come in here soon. But in the meantime, this is kind of a new for me, these whole how-to videos. And I wanna do a shout out to Nick Neiman. Nimmin, I believe you say it. I've done a lot of his YouTube watching, a lot of his tips on how to do just this. Uh, I also want to do a shout out to Think Media. They're another YouTube channel that help you understand how to do how-to videos and production. So I'm not as good as they are, but I'm working on it and I'll get there eventually. But today I said we're going to talk about five tips. I'm going to even say fantastic tips that uh, help you make for better videos. Now, these are not tips I picked up from somebody else. These are tips I've learned in the field myself. So these are highly applicable. I think they're gonna be very user-friendly for many people out there. And if anybody else talks about it in videos, I've not seen it. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but it just means I haven't seen it in other videos. So I think these are some unique tips. I hope they help you out. Now, a little bit about myself here. I'm the videographer. I do a lot of the work for Zip Away. I do it for our Zipline TV show. I do it for our Hovey Life dog show. I shoot a lot of documentaries. I'm a drone pilot. I do a lot of aerial stuff with my drone around uh, very great landscape features like Devil's Tower, the Badlands, uh, Arches National Monument. Um, so I got a lot of good footage out there, and these are proven tips and tricks that help me send and tell a better story in my videos. So the first thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to go in reverse order. Number five, you've got to tighten things up, okay? Um, as an amateur, I always would, you know, get back and want to shoot as much in the frame as possible. And really, that's boring, boring, boring. You want to tighten up your shot and focus on just that subject matter, okay? It tells a better story. The viewer's mind will kind of fill in the blanks anyways. Um, so you really want to get a nice, tight shot. Now, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to include my monitor, and I want to show you an example of what I'm talking about, okay? And right now, I've got my little crib sheet up here. I'll move it down to the corner. I'm going to pull up my videos here a little bit. And uh, I'm going to go to my one camera. And I just figured that showing you real footage would be the best way to go. These are in the field, raw videos that I haven't put in production yet. Okay. But um, here is a shot. This is Stephanie. She works for me out in Idaho. And I'm doing a video for her in my house apartment out there. It's going to be for marketing for our zip line business. And you can see I kind of have her poise and sit in there talking. And I'm going to freeze it here for a second. Now, that's a good shot of Stephanie. I've got my composition. If I go my rule of thirds, I got a line here. I got a line here. I got a cross line third here and a cross line bar here. So technically, I should maybe have her head a little bit more to the left over here so either I can move the camera to the right or I could uh, have her scooter chair. So, but overall, I don't have her bright in the middle, which is kind of boring. I can see I should probably close my bedroom door. But see, all this is useless in the frame. So why include all this extra airspace, which does no good? So instead, I want to tighten things up and I do that with the camera, the optical zoom. And I end up with something like this. Now, isn't that a better frame? I've got her more on the balance of the third. I don't have the bedroom window in there or the bedroom door. I don't have as much filler space. 
Now, I do have this void over here, but I was mindful of leaving that because I'm probably going to come back later and I want to add like a marketing logo for our company. You know, and I can size that up or make it bigger to fill the frame. So if we're doing one for Zip McCall or we're doing one for Zip Boise, of course now I want that built-in space to put our company logos, website, phone numbers, whatnot. So again, I had a little bit of plan when I did this, but take that out of the equation and you look at that video and I'll get playing again. That's so much better of framing her and tightening things up than the original ver the original example I gave you. And I'll just jump back to that. See the difference? She gets washed out. You know, I see the phone box. I see a picture. I see the coffee table with some carabiners and a book on it. You know, what am I focusing on here? What's my subject? It's Stephanie, not her laptop, not these background images. I want to tighten up on my subject. My subject is Stephanie, not the background. So there you go. Focus on your subject. Tighten things up, okay? All right, there you go. Number four, going back to my notes so you can follow along here with me. It's going to be try to present your object or your subject matter in a new angle or perspective. Um, look for unique, like take a flower, but show it a new perspective. Yeah, we've all seen a flower, but show it from a perspective not commonly viewed before. Because even a basic flower can look very interesting. Now, I know I'm going to have some friend, some people on here that are friends of, uh, of my friend John Payne. So let's use a couple of video segments of uh, John Payne, who is with Asia featuring John Payne that I've shot. And I'm going to show you some examples of that, okay? And I'm going to go here. I kind of have these already in my mind. But, you know, we've all seen an auditorium. But have you seen the auditorium from the perspective of the drummer? That's a unique perspective, okay? Maybe you've seen that. But usually we're out here in the green, blue, and red chairs looking at the band. Here's the perspective from the drummer looking out to the audience. Just an example. I'll kind of stay in this directory. We've all seen a guitar. But when you see a guitar, have you seen it from this kind of perspective? Almost like you were holding it in your hands. And here I am focusing on signatures. We got John Payne. We've got Carolyn here. We've got, uh, I don't I can't read, read these. It looks like Johnny Fedovich. But the band signs and names. But anyways, see it from a different perspective, okay? Here's the guitar going the other direction from the bottom up. I'm showing it in a unique way that's eye-appealing, eye-candy. That's very, very important. Okay? We talked about perspective again. Here we go. Here's a live shot from the back of the drummer. There's Johnny Fedovich. He's in our videos. He does a lot of the soundtrack shows, our, dr our drums. There's John Payne sneaking around over here looking for Moni, kind of doing a clap. And then here, cue the fog machine, folks. <laughs> but that's unique footage. That's what you want to go for, a videographer that's not usually able to be seen by anybody else. That's unique, folks, right there. Hello to Jamie Hosmer on the, on the keyboards, too. So you want to look for those unique positions that aren't readily seen before, okay? Now, I've got a lot of video on here that I've kind of said I wouldn't put up here because I want to honor my word. But I can't see play this one. Okay, again, here's another new perspective. We've got John Payne on the bass. we got Steve Ajeri, former lead vocals for Journey. 
Anyways, but it's a new perspective, okay? We've all been to a concert, and you see how I'm tightening things up? I'm moving it in. We don't need to see the curtain or the drums all behind. We want to make sure we get a nice video that accents both of these professionals in a unique perspective. So tighten things up, and again, show things in a new perspective. What's this video down here, okay? Here we are after concert. I'm out there walking around. I guess I just shooting some B-roll to people. A couple of sub, a couple of fans in the front row. I know John and everybody always appreciates their fans. He's really big fan base, so that's great. Um want to see what else I can show here without breaching my word. That's another thing too as a videographer, you get a level of trust with the band. And you don't want to breach your trust. Here I am. See, I'm tightening up on John. Obviously, this is all raw footage. I haven't done any kind of post-production coloring adjustment yet. But I'm tightening up on John. And I'm trying to show him not the exit light or the stage lights or the stage in itself. But John is the subject. So again, show things in a new, unique angle and a unique perspective. Um, let me give you another example. We've all seen the guitars where people do, uh, in this case, do uh, signatures. I'm just trying to show the signature writing from John in a new perspective. This is backstage in the green room. He's doing some signatures for the merch that he'll uh, give to the fans later. But another unique perspective. Um, let's see here. What's another one to kind of give me an idea? Here's one. Here's Johnny Fedovich, a drummer. Do a little bit of a warm-up. Now, I could show him from a regular angle, but no, I'm up over his shoulder looking down, showing you what Johnny sees. That's a unique angle. Go for the uniqueness of it. It accents the speed. I've got the composition on the subject matter of the drumming and his little rubber warm-up kit there. That's kind of interesting B-roll. Maybe not. But see, I don't need to focus on all the food in the green room. I want to focus on the subject matter. Oh, okay, here's the one I was going to mention before. Here's a, a sample of the guitarist, their kick pedals, all their little uh, gauges on the floor. They give them rasp and clarity and sound and echo, 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 and all the little buzzes that they kick with their feet when they're playing. I'm shooting that purposely with a new angle, up close, showing you details that if you were standing there, you probably wouldn't notice. Okay, so tighten things up and get a unique angle on things. Very, very important. All right, let me close this out. Let me pull up my list here. And I want to go to the next item on the list. And the next item on the list, number three. Depth of field. This is a camcorder hack that I use that helps me immensely. Now, if you don't know what depth of field is, I'd recommend you go back and look at some YouTube videos. But it has to do with when you have your subject matter in front, the background is, is fuzzy behind them. That means you have a shallow depth of field, okay? Okay. A shallow depth of field means you're focused on me and behind me should be uh, blurry. Now, a problem with a camcorder is it's a fixed lens. You can't take the lens off and swap out a new one like a DSLR camera. Okay? The camcorder itself, the whole body, there's lenses inside that whole length of the camcorder. And it's fixed. You can focus out and focus in, but that's it. You can't get that really depth of field and get that buttery look behind somebody. Maybe you can get a little bit of fuzz, but for the most part, you don't get depth of field. The camera is trying to do what they call infinity focus. Now, if you do manual focus, you can focus on the individual, and then maybe you get a little blur, a little depth of field, but here's the hack to make it even better. Now, you have to have a pretty decent camcorder. 
Um, the four and five and six hundred dollar camcorder should do pretty good, but the key is you want to have optical zoom, not a digital zoom. You want to zoom in with optics and lenses, and the digital zoom then will still keep your resolution rate at 4K or 1080 high def. If you zoom in digitally, it gets grainy, and you don't get the depth of field hack trick I'm going to show you here. So let me go in here again. I'm going to go back to my camcorder with my um, monitor frame. And I'm going to go back to my videos. And I'm going to pull up here some I did with Clayton, one of our lead builders out in Idaho. And I've already kind of got these all kind of pre-picked out. So... Here, I'm going to shoot Clayton. I'm just shooting some B-roll. We're doing some uh, interviewing at lunch. He's using a tree stick as a fork for his salad. But if you kind of notice, I got Ankas down here panting. You see the background? Maybe a little, blur, a little bit of blur. But for the most part, my camera is putting everything into focus. And what that does is it keeps Clayton kind of flat with the background. There's really not any much separation or bringing him three-dimensionally forward in the frame, correct? So what I want to do with a camcorder, here's the big hack, move the camcorder back off your subject like 10 feet. And then optically zoom back in to get your composition of your frame back the way you want it. And here I've got Clayton on the on the third line this way and the third line this way. And here, right here, your eye wants to draw right here about to his throat region. Okay? That's about the third point. But I'm still 10 feet back with the camcorder. Here I'm up close. And now here it is with me moving back on another frame of Clayton doing the interview. There you go. Look at that. I'm about 10 feet away from Clayton at this point, but you see the trees behind them and the Burma Bridge and the ropes of the zip line course behind them? They're all blurred out now. They're more buttery. My depth of field is shallow. I'm focused on Clayton, not infinity focus and all the content behind him. And because of that, I get better separation of Clayton in the frame and less on the background. So I'm really way ways here, but then you better have a good lavalier mic or your external boom mic might not pick them up as well. So there's a catch, better frame of uh, better composition and depth of field for that buttery look, but you better up your game with microphones as well. Now to show you that again, here's a different perspective. I pull back a bit. You'll see it's not quite as fuzzy but I'm also using our cross beam for the zip line and these guy wires as accent pieces to the subject matter. But still, I'm focused on Clayton, and he's in the forefront. Everything behind him is kind of blurred out. I'll go back again. There you go. Here's another example. And you kind of play around a little bit with this to kind of get the angle you want. But I've always got the background I'm trying to blurred out with a shallow depth of field, and I want to focus on Clayton. And that's just raw video. That's not edited. That's not colorized. That's a pretty That's a pretty good one. I move back a bit, and you see now the background's more blurred out. His water bottle, the salad dressing, Clayton's in focus, but the background's more, bu uh, more fuzzed out. So you can kind of work on that a little bit with your camcorder and make it better. And you can see here, I've been working on that. So you might take four or five or six shots just to kind of get warmed up and get in position where you want. But you want to plan your shoot and then shoot your plan. Here I'm camera close, but the background now is in focus as well. So that's not as good as I think something like that is better. Okay. Okay. Now, if I also go back, I can show you that same thing, that the field with that Stephanie video before. And I'll use that for an example because it's a good example. 
Again, we're shooting her in the house, but here, if I freeze frame it, see it's the fireplace in the background is all fuzzed out. The subject matter is Stephanie herself. Now, the camcorder is about 15 feet off of her, 15 feet away, and I'm focused in tight with the optical zoom. But because of that, I had to trade off, and here's the hidden lavalier microphone on her vest. So that's hack again. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm trying to give you reasonable, real-life good hacks that you may not pick up anywhere else. Okay, let's go into our list here again. I'm a list guy, okay? I like to follow a list and keep on track. Um, next, okay, here's a good one, folks, number two. Now, if you've come this far in the video, hang with me, because this is going to be top five hacks. I'm also going to give you a bonus hack and number six here at the end. So if you made it this far, thank you. You got a bonus hat coming as your reward. But number two, if you are shooting a subject and you want to create a sense of that subject matter being smaller or less important or less dominant in the field, then you want to obviously pull your frame back, shoot a wider angle, and shoot slightly down, downward to your subject. You make them look more minuscule and more less important on a downward angle. If you want your subject matter to be more important or you want them to look more regal or dominant, be neutral or even a slightly upward angle to your subject matter. Okay? Or slightly up to your subject matter. Again, that's a big deal. Let me go back to these Stephanie videos. Okay, we've already found out if we look at this one, I've got too much in the frame. I need to tighten it up. I also need to get the camera further away to get a better depth of field so the background kind of blurs out behind her. And if you look, I'm not looking straight at her eye. I'm kind of looking downward at her. So she kind of looks small in perspective of the laptop and the end table. She doesn't look as important in the frame. And that's a big deal. If I'm going to focus on her and the message she's going to tell, I want her to be focused on subject and be important looking. She is the focal point here. So if I skip ahead, and I'm moving the camera around. This is called your setup. This is why it takes 20, 30 minutes before you're ready for a video shoot. You've got to prepare for it. So here I try to move the camera, I'm more a little bit level, but I'm still a little bit looking down at her. I want to improve that downward angle, be more level. Ah, uh, I tighten things up and now I'm a little bit more level, more eye to eye with her. You can see it increase and improve as I go along. And she's just got a great smile, so I want to accentuate her smile and the warmth of her face and her welcoming you with the message and her message that she's videotaping. Again, about the same. We got a phone call right in the middle of a video shoot. So if you're in business, turn off the ringers on your phone so you don't get interrupted. I got the ringer on my phone turned off. And then here, I think this is like the last one. There we go. Well, I forget here. Which one was it? 16. We might have one more here. Here we go. This is the last one. This is the take of the day. So you can see my compositions go to the frame. I got the depth of field because the camera's pulled away 15 feet. That was your tip. I got good sound with a lavalier mic. I got good frame composition. She's on my third line right at the cross of the thirds, which is right about uh, here on the frame. I got it right on her cheek. To me, that's as good as I'm going to get without fancy lighting and bigger, bolder cameras and detachable lenses, that's a pretty good shot for what I'm using it for. Um, another thing here, and it goes with this tip, I want you to lean in on this one, okay? I've heard that phrase from somebody else, and I want you to lean in on it, okay? This is tip 
number one. Your best tip ever. And I'm going to go back to full frame on this one so you can kind of catch me, okay? Tip number one of the hack. Make your subject look good. I know it sounds basic, and it's kind of like, well, yeah, duh. I want my subject matter to look good. But hear me. Make your subject look good. You use these hacks. You get your depth of field hack. You tighten things up. You do your composition. You get it level or slightly up to show them a little bit more dominance and more presence and strong. You've got good microphone, a good lavalier mic. You have perfect composition and balance with all your thirds. After all that, if you don't make your subject or the person you're videotaping look good, or dog, or house, or fireplace, or tomato, or oranges, whatever you're shooting, if you don't make them look good, you're not going to get brought back and hired again for that job. Let me give you an example. It's more relevant with pets, wedding photography, or even what I do, personal interviews. I am a larger individual with a fuller throat. The last thing you want to do is have the camera down too far, looking up at me, give me too much stance. And as you look up, all you see are a lot of nostrils and my big double chin. And this doesn't make me look as good as if you're looking straight at me or maybe even slightly down. Even if your camera is level with a person, coach someone that you will sit forward a little bit with their chin down. It helps accentuate their facial features in a more favorable way. And say if I have a receding hairline, you don't want to focus on the left side or the right side that shows my receding hairline the most. Maybe I have a lazy eye. You don't want to shoot me from this side showing off my lazy eye. You and me want to shoot me from this side shooting off my brighter eye. You want to use these tips of composition, depth of frame, showing off your subject matter, but still you got to be conscious of what your subject matter is and show them off in a good light, right? Okay, that's common sense, but tip number one, even if you're right with the camera and right with everything else, if you're accentuating a weakness of your subject or they're conscious about that subject and you still emphasize it in your video, they're not gonna call you back. Would you call you back if you emphasize your weakness in the video? No, I don't think you would. I don't think you would. But anyways, you've hung with me this far. Bonus tip, okay? Plan your shoot. When you go out and you're doing a video shoot, plan your shoot and then shoot your plan. Know what you're going to shoot. Have it visualized in your mind. Bring the equipment you want and then shoot what you plan for the day. Sometimes it's okay to take out your camcorder and do the running gun and kind of just shoot things randomly. But if your mind is purposeful and you know what you want, you're placing the camera in the right spot, you're getting better composition of frame, depth of field, you're looking at coloring, is the sun to your angle at 45? Is it behind the camera? Is it behind me and you're going to get shadows and a washout? Time of day, all these things matter when you plan your shoot. And then when you show up, shoot your plan. Now with your plan, be flexible. Plans change. I might be out in a nature setting and I'll be doing a video and I'm gonna shoot a boulder. But all of a sudden, if I'm like positioned for the boulder and I see deer or something across the way, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start shooting the deer. I'm gonna be flexible within my shoot, okay? I want to make sure that I'm shooting my plan, but I'm flexible for that one-off unique situation that might present itself. Or I show up and it's rainy. Um, maybe have a little bit of a backup plan. If it's gonna rain on your subject matter, maybe then you move over to a building and you shoot it out through a window and use your zoom lens. 
That's what a 15 or 20 time optical zoom in a camcorder's for is zoom in so you can get better position from where you're at. So there you have it, folks. Those are my five tips to make more better, fantastic videos, plus the bonus. But like I said, these are kind of hacks I've learned from doing it myself over the years. And these work for me. I'm still learning. I'm a kind of a still a newbie videographer. I've been shooting camcorder now work for like the last five or six years. I'm getting better and also with my drone work. So anyways, thanks for joining. If you found any of these tips useful and you like this video, please hit the like button. Hit subscribe. Feel free to share. Feel free to link this on your YouTube page and share it with others because these are tips I'm not seeing in other how-to videos. So again, I'm Steve with Zip Away Productions. Thanks for coming by, and we'll see you soon. Bye now.